And 17-year-old James Ward, that's whose body was found on the Little Miami River last night. He went missing on Saturday, and a short time ago, a body was pulled from, pulled rather, from the Great Miami River in Hamilton. And that's believed to be a kayaker who's been missing since Sunday. In both cases, the rivers were moving faster than usual due to the heavy rain. Our local 12's Jeff Hirsch is along the Little Miami with one expert's suggestions for safety. Jeff, good news for all of us to hear. Good evening. Oh, good evening. You know, it goes without saying you should wear a life jacket, but it goes without saying I'm saying it anyway, because obviously people in some instances, both of those two instances, in fact, were not wearing life jackets. There is another possible safety solution as well, and that involves flags or lights. If you're a river veteran, you can tell if the water is more dangerous than usual. We live with the river on a daily basis, and we know it on a, on a, um, you know, personal level. But if you're a river rookie, you may be clueless before you go in swimming or boating. Neither the swimmer in the Little Miami Saturday nor the kayaker in the Great Miami Sunday was wearing a life jacket. Kayaking has become such a big, big sport. And a lot of people buy kayak, but they don't buy a life jacket or they don't read that doesn't come with instructions. You don't have to take a safety class or anything like that. So um, a lot of people are out there that really don't know a whole lot about it. And they really should try to inform themselves and, and learn what they can do to make themselves safe. And it's all about really wearing a life jacket. If you have a, a Coast Guard approved life jacket on, you're gonna be 100% or at least 99% safe, even if you do capsize. Gary Morgan runs Morgan's Outdoor Adventures, canoe and kayak trips. Life preservers are part of those journeys, but not everybody takes an organized outing. Morgan says he'd like to see a system of safety warning flags or lights at canoe liveries and public access points. Green, the river is safe. Orange, be more aware and cautious. Red, the river is dangerous and officially off limits. Just somebody who's putting in themselves and they don't really know the body of water is not, not a great idea. They need to seek information. Yeah, and if I was going out, I'd seek information. Honestly, I don't know if this is fast, slow behind me. It's higher than normal, but is this faster than normal? I don't know. And what could be around the bend? I don't know that either. So if you had a system of flags or lights, which could go up at the canoe liveries, now of course they know what they're doing, they won't go in if it's dangerous, but if you have some flags or lights, maybe you had a flag up or a light up in the park, this is Arm Leader Park, you know, before you came down towards the river, you would know, this is the canoe launch point. Maybe if you saw a flag or a light up here, you'd go, well, you know, maybe not a good idea. At the uh, canoe launch points, or the liveries rather, um, Morgan says the canoe businesses would be responsible for that, or could be, uh, the governments would have to take care of anything uh, on public access locations. Live in Anderson Township, Jeff Hirsch, Local 12 News, back to you. And Jeff, you know, he, often we hear about, I'm a strong swimmer. Did you talk to him about that? Does he have the same rules for strong swimmers? Yeah, I mean, you could be a strong swimmer, but if it's a strong current, I don't care how good you are. You could be Michael Phelps. It can, it can uh, pull you down, or you could come upon some debris that could then impede your path, could hurt you. So, yeah, it's, it's mostly safe, usually, particularly if you're with people that know what they're doing. But, you know, look, we saw stuff over the weekend where people are paying the price for not necessarily taking certain safety precautions. Yeah, it is heartbreaking. All right, thanks so much, Jeff Hurst. And the Hamilton right. County Sheriff's Office still investigating this little Miami incident. Friends of the victim gave conflicting information, apparently, to deputies at the scene. Some said James Ward was indeed in the river, but another claimed he was talking to Ward on the phone. Ward refused to come out of the woods.